Francine Mbele and welcome to NOC TV and our new series where we interview tech entrepreneurs from Africa who are making a difference. Today is MFA Peba from Togo. She is a social entrepreneur, Africa IT Women Ambassador in Togo, Women Tech Makers Lome's Lead, co-organizer of Google Developers Group Lome and creator of all mobile funding platform. So, MFA, thank you for being on TV today. Thank you. So, your crowdfunding platform, all mobile funding, has received many recognitions. In 2013, you have been shortlisted of the, at the Africa Forum in the 100th University for Sustainable Development, organized by the French agency. Uh, for development and in 2015 you participated at the tech camp in uh, West Africa in Ghana and received the recognition at Apps Africa in Cape Town, South Africa. How all mobile funding is different from a traditional crowdfunding platform in Europe? All mobile funding is a crowdfunding platform but also the microfinance online platform. The difference is uh, all mobile funding can be used with mobile payment, uh, the mobile money. Uh, in Africa, people most of the time are very, I don't know, they, they don't know how to use online payment. They know it, but they are not really engaged to use it. But today, nowadays, we have mobile mobile money in Africa. So with mobile money people can go on the platform, put money alone or together with other person and fund their own business. This is the difference. Uh, very practical and very fast to be used. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how have you developed, uh, uh, decided to become a tech uh, person? Uh, I have a tech background. I have a tech background. and But I have a a story, a little story to share with you. After uh, my O level, my parents decided that I should become a, a doctor because my father is a doctor, my mother is in medicine, even my young brother is a doctor. So people say that I should have this background of medicine also. I start doing medicine the first year, but. Uh, I was very bored and I said, no, what am I doing there? I should choose another thing, to do another thing. And I asked people, medicine, what can I study? Um, study, I don't want medicine, I want to study another thing. And they said, wait, telecom. And I want to telecom, I, I studied telecom and I start working in telecom domain, but I can see that I'm doing the same thing every time with the same person. But I, I like innovation, I like doing new things, learning new things. So I said, why not going to take IT, doing IT? Even I was working in telecom, I should to work in IT. This is how I became a tech person. Entrepreneur. Okay, so why entrepreneur? Why you didn't want to work for an organization and you chose to be an entrepreneur? Uh, I can say that entrepreneurship has chosen me. I'm not the one who has to do, who who have who has chosen entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship has chosen me in this way that. I was saying that there is many difficulties, there is many problems people are having and my own, I, I was having issue to do some things, easy things people, people are doing in abroad, anywhere, but in my country I can find that people are struggling to do it and as I have a background of tech, I, I said, how not mm, mm, putting tech and entrepreneurship together? Yeah, put entrepreneurship together with uh, tech. But I don't want to be an entrepreneur like people are hearing. I want to change. I want to make impact. I want to change things around me. So I hear about social entrepreneurship, and I start learning. 
gain skills, chatting with people, and networking around this concept. And it's a new concept, and I like it. And that's why uh, I I know I know that when I choose to resolve issue, finding solution, I am an entrepreneur. This is the way I'm taking things. That's this definition of entrepreneurship. Yes, yeah. somebody yeah. who solve a problem out of profit, uh, and you have the social impact as well as the profit. There you go. <laughs> okay, tell me. So, why then a crowdfunding app? Why did you decide to create a crowdfunding app? Okay, this based on my own experience. The first project I had. I heard about crowdfunding platform. I don't want to mention the name, but it is a crowdfunding platform in France. I went there and I have posted my project. Till that time and now, no one have funded my project. But I can see that around me, I'm seeing people, they have posting their project on this platform and um, and they are founded. And I say, ah, that what I recognize after is those people are living in abroad. They are African like me, but they are living in abroad. And I say, ah, because they are living in abroad, people can trust them, they know them. And me in Africa, who knows me? So I decided that I must create something like that for Africans. So this is how the crowdfunding came to my mind mm -hmm. to solve issue again. So young people can go there, post their project, network around it, make campaign and get money around, and also put money themselves through the microfinance online platform. Mm -hmm. That's why. How many projects have you been able to put online and mm -hmm. to also raise money for? Uh, currently, we have four and five projects. They are online, uh, or mobilefunding.com. You have it. You can go online and take it. Uh, but we cannot find the raise amount on them because everything is doing through the mobile money of flus. And they are. I know people are shy themselves. They don't know how to communicate around their own project. But a crowdfunding is to communicate yourself. You cannot crowdfund if you cannot communicate, make a campaign, putting people together and inform that you have something like that. Come and share with me this idea, fund it and you gain this or make a donation. So people are not yet involved in the concept. That we are doing our best to bring them in this concept. So, how do you track the flus money? Flus, uh, mm -hmm. we uh, can you explain what flus is? Yeah, uh, currently, flus uh, is a brand name of uh, a mobile money product of uh, an operator here. Uh, it's an e wallet, you have your money on your mobile you can pay you can make transaction even everything you want you can go and use it you can even send a money transfer money transfer money to a person through this uh, product mm -hmm. it's a product fin finance product bet on mobile how can you track how many people send by flus on mm -hmm. how can you recognize what has been said by flus linked to OMA mobile? How, how do you make the reconciliation? Okay. First of all, we start basically. Basically, is we have our own account, our own, our own mobile account linked to uh, a number, a mobile number, uh, ordinary mobile number. So, with this number, we have an account of flus. So, you send your your money, if you have as a project owner, you communicate around your project and tell people that this is the number you will send money to. Now we are managing to have a partnership with 
this operator here, the operator is move to have a partnership with them so we can have the API and put it on our platform and linking and directly people will go and have a short code who have a short code and you tap your short code and send money through not again by the basic number just a number like that to send money to no now with a partnership with the local operator we have an api and put it and when you want you tap a USAID code and you send money like that. what are the kind of project people always have been posting um, uh, some some project that have been posting and how much money are they looking for Ah, they are not looking for great money. They are looking. They are not looking for big money because in their mind they are just. They know that people will not fund a lot, just little money. For instance, uh, some money is uh, I don't know in CFA. You want me to? Yeah, I think translated pounds. Okay, six on me from that's five hundred pounds. Yes, yeah. uh, not not Most less than a million. Yeah. Yeah, less than 1,000 pounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. For the basic, yeah. yeah. What yeah. kind of project are those? What can be found uh, by, for 1,000 one pounds? Uh, a project of uh, shoes makers, project of... Um, last time we have a project submitted by uh, a young woman. It's a project of restoration, mobile restoration. She wants to have her own restaurant but she wants to go around and sell food to people in the uh, area it's so it's like a truck is she going to have a truck to yes, go around with? yeah people will not come to her but she'll come to people and sell that's great yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, was she successful in her fundraising uh not yet oh, not yet it's very very shy people you know I think people must believe in your projects and very difficult. But we are, we are doing our, our best. And what we want to do also, you remember me, is to build a community, a whole mobile community. I know that if you can have a community with many people, with investors, even people from abroad, something can be done. Mm -hmm. It will be our next step. Yeah. And at the moment, what are the key challenges really? Except, you know, convincing. How are you able to convince people finally to crowdfund or to give money to somebody they don't know? Is it something in, within African culture that is is it different from the way people operate in African culture or what kind of, um, you know, <laughs> culture are we in at the moment? Yeah, do you know that in the past, the concept of crowdfunding or crowd co-working, those things, was African concept. In the past, our, our grandparents was working together, they put money together. For instance, in this month, people will be together and work in this uh, home with this person, go to their business, and next month. I think this concept is for Africa. The people has uh, people have lost this concept. So now we are going to remember them that working together, sharing together, struggling together is African concept. So. Let's start by the community, uh, and the big challenge is to convince people, to, to make them in confidence. What's your strategy to make people adopt now the crowdfunding and, and, and showing them that it fits African culture? Okay, uh, I think first of all, the project owners must have a good, model, a, a good business model to convince people. If your business model is not so pretty and adapted to African people, I don't know how people can trust you. A strong and good and local model business and we must build a good 
community around our own business as a mobile phone and we must have some proofs I mean we must have some stories to share with people, success stories. Mm -hmm. Your main dream is to change your country, Togo, that's what you said on your website, and impact the whole Africa through technology. What exactly do you want to see happen? Happen? We want changes. We want people to change their mindset first. We want people to learn. We want people to have skills. We want people to be practical, not to have a big diploma, big certificate with master degree, PhD degree. No, you want people to go straight in their choices. I want to be a doctor. Good. I want to be a doctor. A doctor in what? Can you use technology to be a good doctor? You want people to use tech in every domain of their activities. You are selling in markets. How can you go beyond the border of Togo with your products? You can use e-commerce. So motivate people to learn for skills, to know how people are doing it outside, and to bring it and replicate it and adapting and to use it. Motivation. Mm -hmm. So what was holding you back to you know, go out there and make the difference that you are now making. Uh, I think I have a dream and I want to achieve my dream. No matter what will be the situation, what will be, what people will think about. And there is many difficulties. We are in Africa and I'm a woman. I'll, I'll, I'll face many difficulties, social, financial but I have support from friends uh, from my communities members and my own choice to achieve what I should do it's not easy but I'll do it mm -hmm. you just mentioned as a women in IT which uh, we come into a real struggle um, myself I've been struggling to find some women um, but um, how can we encourage more women to join this field? How can we encourage them? Why do you think they are not massively in tech today? Why women are not in tech? Women are in tech via their background. I've, I've known, I've met many, many women in tech, young, men, young women in tech, but they are not appreciated as usual as the mass. They are thinking that tech is a domain of men. And they cannot think that they can succeed in this domain. No, they need motivation. They need a model, a role model. And I'm doing my best to share my experience, my motivation, and to have some workshop, some uh, code labs with them. And so I believe when they will see, they will share with us, I'll, I will share with them my experience, the experience with other women in Kenya, Nairobi, those things, they'll be motivated. And you also call it the women um, tech makers yeah. um, and um, what kind of uh, programs or activities that you do in this, in this? Okay, first of all, women tech makers is um, um, a Google project for women in technology because uh, Google recognized that during the um, workshop, the conference, the events, men are a lot and you will see only two, three men among them. So Google decided to have a group for women. Why not having a group for women, rolling by women, and everything, all the activities are, do, are will be done by women. This is how women techniques came. So in Togo, we have this group affiliated with 
Google Developer Group TDG. In women tech makers group, women are few. But we are doing our best to have other women with us. We are doing code labs to teach how to do code in Java, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Android, those things, and how to pitch their own project, uh, how to have a community life, and so on and so on. So, do you think that uh, when you say that women sometimes are not aggressive, mm. um, also that it's linked perhaps with personal branding? How personal branding is important for you to be able to achieve your mission? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think personal branding is a powerful tool. A, a, each woman must use a powerful tool. Before I was hiding my personal personality, even in the past, I've never put my own name in social network. I need to post some uh, pseudo, but I found that I must bring myself behind forward, be forward, 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 presenting myself to share my imagination, my project with people, talk about what am I doing. I don't want again to go in my room, close my door, and doing things alone, no. So, personal branding is a good thing, and women must learn how to use it. How to use social networks. Women are not using social networks like they must do it and especially tech women, they must go there and present what they are doing. Even a little code lab, a little code source that have done, they can go there and show people that I've done this. Even little, the thing must be, they must sell themselves positively through social network, website. We have many, many platforms today. And why not doing a pitch, a video pitch of yourself, talking about what you are doing, a selfie, and post it on Facebook, Twitter, and people will come and say, wow. So I know it's good to use this tool, and I encourage people to use it, especially women. Mm -hmm. So your mindset seems to be very entrepreneurial, of mm -hmm. course. And what's your life philosophy as a general? So, you know. My philosophy, uh, my philosophy is based on a quote, and this quote came from a man of God, Otabel, who said, "No matter how is your situation, nobody can change the power of your imagination." This is my philosophy. No matter how I am, a woman. No matter where I live in Africa, no matter my social, financial situation, I have an imagination and no one, no one will not change it. I will use this imagination to impact, to develop things, to change my country, to change Africa and to change the whole world. This is my philosophy. Mm -hmm. How can we get more young people to be more imaginative? In Africa, specifically. <laughs> in Africa. I think in Africa, people have dreams. They have a big, big, they have big, big dreams. When you chat with them, you have them, wow, this one. And when you start asking them, did you do something before? They say, oh no, I tried to put something on paper bed. Oh, <laughs> they have already done it in Kenya. They have already done it in Ghana. Wow, you can also do it and adapt it to your country, adapt it to your own personality. So we can learn to imagine it. People can learn it. People can go and see what people are doing in Ghana, in Benin, everywhere. We can learn it. If you don't have imagination, learn to have imagination. Mm -hmm. 
this is my advice. Yeah. So you also have created eTechnopole, which is a social startup that provides ICT solutions and mobile web technology. How do you see mobile technology um, you know, helping Africa development and Togo in particular? We know that there's a huge mobile uh, phone penetration, but yeah. how mobile technology can really help Africa development and Togo? Okay. I think today, nowadays in Africa, in Togo, mobile technologies, as I think, can do many things. Internet is not so good in Africa. If internet is not so good, many people, everybody in Africa, in Togo, uh, I don't know, has a mobile phone. So let us use mobile phone to change things. We have data today. We have 3 So young people, every person can develop a content. Today we have a problem of content in Africa. Uh, we are in lack of content. So if people can imagine and change things and develop content around health, agriculture, Around even informal activities domain, they can develop some content to make people life easy, and the, those content will be used on mobile phone, and they can change things around them through mobile phone. So they will not use mobile phone for call, SMS, WhatsApp only. They will use mobile phone to change things in agriculture, health, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do we get those people to become creators as you want them to be? <laughs> any, any thoughts on that? <laughs> Let us share our motiva motivation with them. Because, I don't know, we cannot force them. But let us motivate them, let us share a story with them, let us encourage them. And the politics also have their roles. Training. In school, like secondary school, we can start, as we have done it last time, we have a code week uh, program, we have done it. The government can initiate a code program from secondary school. Every student in school now must have a code course. You can start it by that, like that, or take, take, I don't know, take training with people, for people in every domain. Because in the future, the, the next um, literacy people will be those who have no skill, or who has any skill in tech. So government can initiate projects around text. Community, local communities can initiate things around text. And every person can play a role to change things through text. Mm -hmm. So do you think that um, now with the mobile technology and mobile phone that everybody has, there used to be a lot of cyber cafe in uh, in Africa and in Togo. Do you think that they are disappearing or they are playing in a different role? Um, last time I went to a cyber cafe to meet a client of mine. When I went there, I see that there was only a few people that I can remember that in the past when we went to a seabed cafe, you see that it will be it will be plenty and even you will not have a place to work. But now people are getting less. That means people are using mobile phone. Uh, it is not uh, a bad thing. It's a good thing. If people can use their phone to have that with data, okay, it's good. That means that uh, technology is going forward. But I think they can use it to change things. If you are not going again to a cyber, you are making, I don't know, uh, because before going to a cyber, you must go through a motor or taxi. 
So now you are not going again to a seabed. So you have money to put somewhere. So with this money, you can do another thing. With this money, you can have a more a bundle you want on your mobile phone and make search, make courses, learn everything you want on your phone. I like the way things are going. People are using mobile phone for everything. So I, 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 I hope that they can also change things through mobile phone. I don't want to repeat myself, but it's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. But again, you're talking about IT and mobile phone, etc. But the high speed internet is still very low or very slow at the moment. Um, how um, easy it is for a tech entrepreneur here in Togo or in Africa to really make things happen with uh, low, low, low speed internet and uh, very, very expensive? It's not easy, very difficult. So internet is our big challenge in Togo right now. Even though they are talking about uh, um, electronic economy, digital economy, Internet is our big challenge. We have, uh, I don't know, the quality is not so fair. Mm -hmm. But we can do something. We can start from somewhere. For my own, I used to work in nights. When I finish my day, I go home. And in night, I can find that people are sleeping. and. <laughs> you see, when people are sleeping, so the, the boundaries are very accessible and you can do what you want if internet is, it is working. So, we must seek for these opportunities. If people in night are not using internet, young people can stay in night and work and we must start from somewhere. When by starting we can go and tell people that I've done this, even internet was low. So let us start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about the dark side of internet and uh, some of the cyber criminality that uh, you know takes place on the internet. How can you or can we prevent young people or even less young people to use internet if, um, in this bad way and use that to be more productive? It's not easy. <laughs> it's not easy. You know that in Africa we have any policy around how young people must use internet. There's any policy around it. There is no policy. No oh, policy okay. in Africa. For instance, in Togo, you can go to. Last time somebody was telling me about something that he went to a Sibe cafe and he was there working and a young girl came. She went to buy her bundle, she came and opened her computer and was looking on. Think about what you want to think. <laughs> Can you imagine a young girl went to sit there to work on internet and went to see? <laughs> I know that it's not easy, but we can start uh, advocating around this situation. Why not having a policy? in Sibe Cafe, and even for parents in house, uh, your children, for instance, in primary or secondary school, can have a smartphone, can have a phone, but not bringing it to school. They can go to school with any smartphone, any mobile, but when they will come home, for a moment, we can give them a mobile phone, they can use it for make searching, Searching for their courses, but tell them when you went to internet, don't see, but look after how to know your courses, how to better your courses. I think it will be advice, it will be true advice, and tech people can make advocacy around it also. Let us start by advising people and tell them. When you went to internet, go to search for positive things, not negative things. Mm -hmm. So what are the opportunities? I know that there have been some challenges in, and all there are challenges in Africa. 
Are there some opportunities that people from abroad in the diaspora mm -hmm. also can, um, you know, contribute to in Africa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, uh, for instance, there is any link between diaspora and uh, local and, for instance, Togo, currently in tech domain. Uh, the government is doing many things to link diaspora people to their country. But I want them to do better in tech domain. Why not having uh, up here and diaspora people from abroad will come sometime, share uh, tech skills, entrepreneurship skills with young people here. I don't want to bring other person from other country to do it. We have many patients in diaspora that have tech skills. You, of course, the, the, they are doing amazing things there. They can come and share it with people. So, government here own to do. We, we have our own to do. Uh, why not have a platform? A platform next through a social uh, network and putting diaspora and the local people together and share our own projects, uh, even finances, so together to work together. I think it will be good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what's your message uh, to African youth and people um, who are looking to want to get involved? My message, as usual, as I used to say, the must an imagination. The must have innovation mindsets. Innovation. Even this thing is being doing somewhere, you can do the same thing, but you can innovate it. And I want them to be humble. Humility. I want them to be humble in everywhere of their lives and to have a mind of change maker in everything in everywhere these are my advices from the imagination innovation humility and change maker mindset this is my mission for for them okay we are coming to the end of the interview is there anything else that you would like to add to this interview uh one thing I want to do, I want to say is, uh, I'm surprised that you are surprised that there is no women in trade in Togo. Uh, I want to take these opportunities to encourage African African women, Togo Togolese women, to come out from their darkness, from their I don't know everywhere they are, to come out, not to be shy. To be natural, to express themselves, and to tell them, to tell people that see me, I'm like that, but I'm doing something. I want them to be, to come out. Mm -hmm. This is uh, my, my my last message. Okay. So Thank how you. people can connect with you if they want to get more information on what you are currently doing? What uh, what's the best way for people to connect with you? Okay. Uh, I have my Facebook page. My Facebook page is uh, Dolce Pemba. I have uh, my Twitter. My Twitter is eTechnopo. Mm -hmm. At eTechnopo. And uh, I have my email global EP. At gmail.com. This is my contacts. And uh, you can Google me. Let me fact Pemba. So you know around me about to be on the internet. Thank you very much for this conversation, Emma. It was a pleasure to talk to you. It was a pleasure for me too. Thank you. Okay. So now, MFA and I would love to hear from you. What was your key takeaway from this conversation? Share your tongue below and tell us what was your key takeaway. And for more information, go on my website, which is francinebelli.com or follow me on Twitter at francinebelli.com.